Jumping into any MMORPG, the very first thing you do is customize a character. A choice that in most games is a pretty permanent one. Unless you dish out real life money for a change, or you're playing a game like this one that only has one race, and that's just boring. To some, this choice is as important as the archetype you pick. And in Ashes of Creation, it's gonna be a pretty hard choice. Ashes of Creation has nine unique races, and all of them in concept are looking pretty nice and will have their own unique twists to them. The Aelin Empire was this massive human empire back before the fall of Vera. The empire's capital city was the city of Ayla, the ruins of which you'll step into when Alpha 2 begins. In Ashes of Creation, these Aelin humans are split into two unique races. One of these humans is the Kalar humans, known for heritage, duty, and order. The Kalar take enormous pride in their heritage and their ability to rise to any challenge. They can be gregarious, friendly, and willing to mix and interact with other races. They've maintained the alien tradition of a feudal society organized around a monarch with subordinates inheriting titles and land. Like their ancestors, they form orders of knights and possess the largest organized standing army of all the races. This deep ancestral pride provides them with a keen sense of duty, but it hampers their ability to negotiate and seek diplomatic solutions. The Veiloon are the second human race whom are known for opportunity, presence, and enterprise. The Veiloon trace their origin to the Sand Squall Desert, where they relied on bravery, curiosity, cunning, and charisma to survive. To this day, they hone those skills to ensure no opportunity passes them by. Historically, the Veiloon organized around an elected magistrate, which delegates political affairs through prominent market organizations and industries. Trade is a core feature of Veiloon politics, and social Social norms inform negotiation rituals that ensure fair, honest deals whenever possible. In times of legend, the first of these ritual trades came in the form of an alien marriage to one of the Jinn guardians of the Sand Squall Desert, which gave rise to the Veiloon, and their glowing eyes and rune-etched skin are the direct results of that ancient union. The Dunzenkel Dwarves were one of the first created major races of Vera, said to arrive to the continent on ships made of stone and steel. This nation deep within the mountains of Vera is one of the oldest in the world. The Dunir Dwarves, who are described with the words artisan, reliability, and deliberation, are hardy and resilient. They value craftsmanship and reliability, thriving in treacherous terrains with unmatched dedication. Loyal to the monarch yet independent in their pursuits, Dunir often perfect trades or seek riches underground. Their military is renowned for its defensive prowess, reflecting their steadfast nature. Known for strong alliances, the Dunir are slow to forget slights, making their grudges legendary. Their stubbornness and loyalty shape their cautious but steadfast political stance. The Nikua, on the other hand, the second dwarven race, are dwarves of exploration, optimism, and hospitality. Three things matter most to the Nikua, family, open sky, and sails full of wind. They are renowned explorers, sailors, fisher folk, and adventurers who maintain the reliability of their cousins the Dunir without discipline. The Nikua act according to the decisions of an elected council of five elders, but are generally only loosely associated outside of their home waters. Their adaptability and community-oriented nature guide their social structures. Their accommodating nature is balanced by the council's unanimous decision, shaping cautious diplomacy. Last we knew, the Dunir lived somewhere up in the Tabletop Mounds, while the Nikua made their home in the Vandegar Tropics. The Kavek Orcs will make their home on the eastern side of the map though, the Renkai heading into a more swamp-like land and the Vek heading more into the mountains. The Renkai are known for strength, honor, and loyalty. The Renkai thrive on dedicated training, loyalty, and honorable fights while producing notable scholars, crossfolk, and fierce warriors. Their confederation, forged through centuries of conflict, rivals the Kalar in military might, though historic strife hampers their diplomatic efforts. Emerging stronger from internal and external conflicts, the Renkai now stand united, their history with the Vex shaping a unique kinship. 
The Vec are known for seclusion, mystery, and prophecy. Vec are often devoted clerics and mages driven by faith and celestial pursuits. Excelling in enchantments and alchemy, a theocracy guided by stargazers, the Vec politics rely on prophecy, impacting their diplomatic stance with a sense of divine destiny. Rooted in shared struggles with Renkai, Vec culture blends celestial inquiry with strong theocratic leadership. The Pyrenees have also made their home on the eastern side of the map, split into the Empyrean and the Pyreals. The Empyrean appear to be the more token-esque elf, known for grace, diplomacy, and knowledge. Intelligent, physically fit, silver-toned, and beautiful by any standards, this elvish race of city dwellers are skilled craftsmen, seasonal soldiers, frighteningly powerful mages, shrewd diplomats, and dedicated leaders. Empyrean pride themselves on advanced civilization, elite military, and highly efficient forms of government. Their lifespan is longer than any race on Vera, giving them ample time for academic pursuits and magical research. While shorter-lived races confine their educational pursuits to childhood, Empyreans seek to further their knowledge every day of their lives and have been known to change professions after hundreds of years. The Pyrae, on the other hand, value individualism and self-expression, living in tight-knit kinships deeply connected to the natural world. They share research resources among kinships and remain fiercely independent, resisting formal governance and maintaining loose family alliances. A violent revolt broke them from their Pyrrhan ancestors, shaping their ungovernable nature, which they celebrate yearly to honor the fights for their freedom. Then last, we have the Tolnar. Tolnar will live underneath the surface of Vera in what is known as the Underrealm. The Tolnar are as varied as the beast aspects they possess, but they are united in one crucial belief. Corruption must be fought wherever it creeps. There are refugees that not only survived, but they have thrived despite the tormenting presence in the world above. In the caverns below the surface, while the ancients ravaged the world, the survivors from all walks of life came together below. They pooled their resources, skills, and knowledge of essence to build a tightly knit community on trust and necessity. They carry those traditions with them today in that all things are shared, be it prosperity or austerity. Mysterious magical wards throughout the massive caverns sealed them underground until the divine gateways reopened unexpectedly. Cautiously, they returned to the surface to greet the other nations as they arrived through the archways. When it comes to gameplay, well, some games introduce things such as racial benefits to the game that give each race a small perk in a different area. Ashes of Creation is not doing this. They will instead rely on character backgrounds, similar to how Dungeons & Dragons or even Dragon Age Origins handled this. They don't want people to feel like they are forced to play a specific race because of gameplay benefits. Play the race you want to play and select your background after for those additional benefits. Each race is said to have their own unique starting mount granted to them through a quest line in their starting area, and while there will be racial themed weapons and armor, they will not be locked to a specific race. Each race also has their unique node aesthetics, which will be applied towards whichever race is the majority in each node when it comes to upgrading it. If the Dunir contribute to a node more than the Kalar, it'll have a Dunir look to it. If the Kalar contributed more, it'd have a Kalar look to it. So you may see these different civilizations popping up in unexpected places at times. Each race also has their own language, which will be distinct between NPC races and and lore, and certain NPCs may react different to you depending on your race as well. It seems Intrepid is really trying to make races feel like more than just character customization choices, and they'll have direct impacts on the world we're in, which is just extra world building effort that is going to make Vera feel more alive and stand out from its MMORPG counterparts.